of us will have a home to go home to. Remember, what makes you different? Let's go! Is what makes you Spider-Man. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? You know, there is a reason why I have the amazing Spider-Man up here in my background as I'm shooting this video. That's because Spider-Man is one of my most favorite characters in all of fictional history. This one being specifically about Miles Morales. Well, how was the film? How did it stand up? How does it stand up to the rest of the Spider-Man films? Well, we're going to talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I really do appreciate it. Now, I remember when this film was first announced, I was not interested at all. I'm like, Sony, man, they don't know what they're doing. Amy Pascal sucks. I'm so glad that she's been fired from Sony. She has ran Spider-Man into the ground. And I'm just like, I have no hope for this franchise. I just want things to go back to Marvel Studios, the true MCU with Kevin Feige. But then the first trailer came out and I found out that it had to do with Miles Morales. And it piqued my interest a little bit. That little teaser they had at nighttime. He jumping off the building, stretching all out, doing Spider-Man stuff. You know, I was like, okay, it's pretty cool. We're going to have to give this a chance. But then they started coming out with more more trailers and marketing material and i just didn't know how this film would be some of the trailers i was feeling some of them i really wasn't you know i was just kind of back and forth and really just did not know what to expect so going into this film my expectations were mediocre i'm um, saying to myself okay if we get a great spider-man film hey we get a great film but if it sucks if it bombs that just uh you know raises the chances of the whole franchise to go back to the mcu now, going into this, um, I did get a bit happier uh, as I started hearing more and more reports on how amazing the film was. People talking about it's the best Spider-Man film of all time, and of course, we're going to talk about that. But dealing with behind the scenes, this film, uh, the, the directing and writing credits has, you know, kind of gone back and forth. You know, the producers are Amy Pascal, uh, Christopher Millen, and Phil Lord. Uh, we got director Bob Parrishachetti, Peter Ramsey, and Rodney Rothman. But now... Um, and Chris and Chris, excuse me, Christopher Miller and Phil Lord were both doing uh, under the writing credits, but now it's only Phil Lord. And for the directors, a lot of them, this is like their first time directing a film. This is their directorial debut. Now, this does not, I mean, this has, the, what I like about this is it takes all of the Spider-Man films from the past, from the comics, and it combines everything together and does make a pretty good film. I'm not going to, like, you know, tease you and say that I liked or hated the film at the very end of this. I really did enjoy the Spider-Man uh, film. It's a it's a great movie. Uh, I will be buying this on 4K Blu-ray. I, I can't wait uh, to buy it again just so I can see all the colors and things like that that was on the screen. I mean, this is just a beautiful film. Um, it stars Shamik Moore. If you don't know him, he voices Miles Morales. Uh, previous work that he's done before was dope. They came out in 2015 uh, by Rick Famuyiwa, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. And there's a there's a ton of people in this film right here that I like. The cast is just stellar. We got Shamik Moore, what I just mentioned. Jake Johnson, he was in Tag and the Mummy earlier. Uh, well, actually, a couple of years ago, Haley Steinfeld. She uh, voices Gwen Stacy and also is in the Bumblebee movie that's about to come out. Marsha Hali is in this. Brian Tyree Henry, uh, Tyree Henry, Lily Tomlin, uh, Zoe Kravitz, Nicolas Cage is in this thing. Chris Pine. I mean, there's this great uh, voice acting all throughout this thing. You can easily recognize all the voices. Uh, like I said before, the first thing that I noticed in this film that I really just loved is how it acknowledged all the Spider-Man lore. Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, the amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, all of that. Uh, it was very clever the way they brought that together. It had the audience laughing. It had me laughing. It, it was engaging. It brought me into the film even more than I already was because it started out really great. Um, I also like that this film does pay respect to Steve Ditko, who passed away earlier this year, and Stan Lee. Of course, you do get a, a camera of him in here I'm not going to tell you what it is of course you have to see the film but i will say that when stanley popped up especially in animation form the, uh the whole theater their hearts melted you know i i, I don't know it was just like a hundred a hundred born uh, puppies were born at the same time with rainbows and sunshines and 
you know, uh, sun, stars all in the sky, you know, universe and things like that. Like everybody was just very, very happy. Next thing I want to talk about this film is the animation. This is an animated film. They just done some things that I have never, ever seen before in any type of production whatsoever. I mean, it was freaking beautiful and creative. I mean, not all, like the color is vast and vivid. You know what I'm saying? I like I, what I was saying earlier. I can't wait to buy this on 4K Blu-ray and uh, change my setting to like something I may call ultra where I watch like colorful movies on just for that or whatever. It's just going to look splendid, spe spectacular. I mean, it, it's so many like every color known man that's ever been created by anybody is in this movie. And the way they're tied in with the animation is, 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 you know, jaw dropping to me at least. Like seriously, I was watching like, damn, I mean, like this is really, you know, pretty cool, you know, what they're doing here. And then also the way they combine the animation like with the way they're telling the story in the comics because it's just some random times when you're watching a movie you know people are giving out lines of dialogue but it's you can see the words pop up on the screen like it's a comic page and it doesn't get annoying or anything like that it's not distracting it just draws you into the film more it, it's 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 very impactful or whatever and and again just you know it's something that i've never seen before so i gotta give uh the sony credit as far as that's concerned and the writers and all that even amy pascal even though i don't still feel like she's no what she's doing but you could tell when the sony had that hack years ago and all this came out and then she was fired or whatever you know this, this is her last ditch ever she's she just like hey you know what i, I could just see her amy pascal just looking in the movies like hey girl everybody hates you and they think you suck and you don't know what you're talking about but we're going to show them with venom and we're going to show them with spider-man into the spider-verse we're doing everything we're going balls to the wall i don't care i have nothing to lose i will prove to them that i know spider-man like I, I i bet you a million dollars amy pascal uh, had that conversation with herself or some executive somewhere and if she didn't she should have or whatever because i mean you know she what if she did have a lot to do you know with this film because you know sometime with those you know uh associate producer producer executive producer it weighs just how much somebody actually has to do with the film or whatever but she really did go boss to the wall with this because you know she has her own production company you know within this call uh called pascal pictures i believe uh so I, i'll go ahead and give her that i was just talking about the animation as well um this is sony's most um as far as the animators that use on this film they use 140 animators i don't know if that's a lot per se because that's just something i don't I, I don't follow you know all the time just to be honest with you but when i was doing my research they said that sony has never on any film ever used that many animators before and it shows on the screen you can tell that they put a lot of extra into this especially with the marketing but not the marketing budget excuse me the production budget being 90 million dollars that's very good in my opinion venom was like a hundred well, to 118 and and this was 90 did I, I don't know if i just said 90 but 90 you know that's that's a good respectable number right there and i'm proud of them for that i hope they didn't spend an ass low on marketing like they usually do which is just horrible like what they did with like spider the amazing spider-man one and two but the budget is good there too now as far as the main character in this film miles morales you know what i'm saying i loved him i love shaming moore's this great voice great character i was able to relate to the character uh shaming moore is a brother he's born in atlanta but he also uh, has jamaican descent and in this film you know or in miles morales if you know from the comics he is mixed between black and hispanic and i was able to relate to him for the black culture yeah because i'm black if you haven't noticed so that was cool and also there was a nice uh touch of hispanic culture in, in, in the film as well his mom his mother was hispanic his father uh was black you know we got a nice uh couple of scenes of their family i love the relationship that uh miles morales had with his father it was beautiful you saw some of that in the trailers where he's just like hey you gotta sit back i love you i mean it was great and not only did they not all just get along all the time in the movie there was some times where you know the father and the son had some disagreements had some arguments both of them was right in some situations both of them were wrong you know the parent is ultimately right because they know best and they have all the experience knowledge and wisdom and things like that but i think you get um but, but you get my point that, that their relationship felt real I, I was able to relate to it i was able to say oh me and my dad went through that at least once one time before in my life so i really did appreciate that this film is also a true headbanger as far as the soundtrack and the score is concerned i was loving the music just all throughout this thing now the composer for this is uh daniel pemberton i've never heard of him before but when i looked up some of the work he's done in the past uh 
and his on his past filmography, he recently did do Ocean's Eight, which came out earlier this year. And I I, I do like that film, and I I do like the music as well. Um, also, I like that we um, got multiple different Spider Mans. We got Miles Morales. We got a good Peter Parker. We got a bad Peter Peter B Parker. We got Spider Man uh, Noir, voiced by Nicolas Cage. Um, we got well, who else did we get? Uh, we got Spider Gwen, who I talked about. We got Spider Ham. We got this uh, Asian uh, Spider person that was in this robotic machine and all that. It was pretty cool. It was it was vast. It was different. It was something that I've just never experienced before. The origin story for all of those Spider Man people or whatever, the way that they told that, I loved it. It was funny and it was repetitive too. That usually when things repeat themselves, it's like okay, damn. I mean, we've seen this before seven times. Why are you repeating yourself? But they had a few elements and plot points with the story and origin that repeated itself but the way that it was edited especially with the animation and all that good stuff it was brilliant and it brought a lot of laughs and like i i, I talked about laughs before this film is funny you're going to laugh you may not just be like you know your stomach is hurting you laughing that hard but it is good and you you will laugh um a whole ton now uh something else that i wanted to say is well okay let's talk about the um let's talk about the plot real quick I love how they told um, us, the audience, how the Spider-Verse worked. Uh, the visual representation of how everything came together, too. I really do like that. That, that was very creative. Um, it made sense. Um, the film challenged you as well because it, the way it, it was presenting the information, it was making sense at first, but then I was like, whoa, this doesn't make any sense right here. It was making sense before. Is this some big pop, plot hole? But towards the middle of the film, it all came together. And he's like, oh, okay. It's all coming together. It's all coming full circle. I like what you're doing there. Great job. Keep it up. So that's dope as well. Um, also, as far as the plot and the story is concerned, um, it does, it, it does give you something more, but it also kind of, uh, gives you a nostalgic value and, and representation of Spider-Man from the past and everything that you know. And of course you have that with great power comes great responsibility and all that good stuff. Of course, they don't leave any, any of that out. Uh, pretty much no complaints. I've talked about all the things I like, uh, even the villains, um, I'm not going to talk about the villains because I feel that would be a spoiler because I really don't remember seeing any other villains in the trailers. I actually do. I just I don't want to spoil it for you guys because some of it was a surprise. Let's talk about my complaints. Let's talk about my grab, my, my, my grabs, my gripes. So early on in this review, in this video, I said that you can it's blatantly obvious that Amy Pascal just was like, hey, we're going to go balls to the walls. There was too many balls. There was too many walls. Okay. They went kind of crazy, especially towards the end. It was just too much for me. Now, I like for my films, my movies, my entertainment whatsoever to make sense. I want it to be logical. I, I want it to have some type of order, some type of organization. If there's a live action movie, if, they, if there's a, a plot hole or something that doesn't make sense, you know, I'm going to call that out. Same thing with animation. I am not going to give this film a pass just because it's an animated film. Let's take the first Spider-Man that came out in 2002, uh, Sam Raimi. Some of the people, some of the, yeah, 2002. Some of the criticism of that film, it was a great film. It was like, okay, how in the hell did Spider-Man learn how to make a suit and things like that? Questions and things like that come up in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I'm just kind of like, okay, where did all these suits come from? Where did this lair come from? Why is this person right here so skilled in this area? I, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. That's one gripe. Another gripe that I have is we have Miles Morales in this film. As you see in the trailers, he doesn't know how to be Spider-Man. He's new to the game or whatever. We have spider um, I mean, uh, Peter B. Parker trying to teach him the way, trying to teach him the ropes. For Miles Morales to have no experience in Spider-Man, there were some um, action scenes in this film to where he was able to escape and get away. And it makes no sense. The villain that's chasing him is like a vet, advanced, knows his stuff, and is agile and powerful and fast. But for Miles Morales to have no experience, he should have been caught. Another thing is, there was one character, this bugged the hell out of me. There was one character in this film that killed another character. First of all, it was very predictable. Right before it came out, I was like, okay, this person about to kill this person. Bam, and then it happened. But right after it happened, I was like, wait a minute. If you, if the person that did the killing, if your ultimate goal was to kill this person, why didn't you kill this person to begin with? You killed this person right here instead. That just made no sense. And that was a plot point that 
was forced into this film, I feel, that ha- that, that they try to shine on the Spider-Man lore motivation of the great power comes with great responsibility, you know, type thing. I'm just like, okay, th- this did not flow. This was forced. I saw it coming a mile away. You know, if, if you were, if you were in a position to kill this person, you should have been killing the, your main target to begin with. I really want to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil that for you. And then my last gripe is, okay, when, when, no, I got two more gripes. And I like the film, guys, but we have all the Spider-Man in here. We got, um, all the Spider-Mans, Nor, the Ham, the Robot, this Spider-Man, Miles Morales, all that. If you know Spider-Man, you know that he can pretty much take down the Sinister Six by himself in some cases, you know, especially if he's lucky. So if if that's the case and you have Sinister Six, six versus one. okay, you pretty can tell uh, how well Spider-Man is with his fighting ability and things like that. But if you have a situation to where it's like six on six, Spider-Man, the spider people should just win. Hands down. It should be no contest that did not happen in this movie. And then with some of the action, I was just kind of like, okay, I can see what's going on, but I really can't see what's going on. The camera is just moving around that much, and I'm really not sensing that many Spidey moves. And my last little gripe, my last little complaint in this film was when the final showdown is going on and the bad guy and the good guy are fighting and things like that, when they're in the middle of throwing fisticuffs, it doesn't make sense to where there can be a break in the fight where good characters are able to talk to each other for a long, long time. What is the bad guy doing in these situations? Like sitting there waiting, going back and forth. Like, okay, as soon as y'all done with your conversation, I'm coming over there to continue to whoop your butt. Round three. You know, it's just like, I, what, I'm like, what is the bad guy doing off screen? Okay, like what are they doing? And just when I say there was too many balls, there was too many walls, it was just too... Uh, it, it was just too much. Like the, they, they took the, the Spider-Man going into different dimensions and things and stuff flying around and portals and just cranked it up to 11 to where I'm just like, okay, this is just a bit much. I mean, they, I, I, I would say they were saying that, Hey, I want you to uh, animate this film in a way that it would be impossible to do live action, but that's not the case because this film was $90 million. But those are just my gripes guys. Overall, I really did uh, enjoy this film. It was a lot of fun. I said I will be buying it. This is not my... Everybody said this is the best Spider-Man film. In my opinion, it is not. I still like Spider-Man 2 better than this. And I... um, I don't know if... I I have to... Man, I'm I'm still trying to decide which one I like more. This one or Spider-Man Homecoming. But definitely, this is not my favorite. Okay, so I will say that Spider Man Two with Doc Ock is with Sam Raimi uh, that came out in two thousand four. That's still the best Spider Man right now for me. This one right now, I, I still got to think about it. I may need to see it one more time. But right now, it's a tie between uh, Spider Man Homecoming and uh, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse. But it's still a great film. Also, stay all the way into all the way through the credits. There's a mid credit scene and there's also a post credit scene, and it's hilarious too. They they they, they they really did do it and i i have to give you know sony credit or whatever i i was hoping well i was hoping that things would just go back to marvel or whatever but you know they really are trying or whatever and so i will give credit where they was due this is a great spider-man film and you will love it if you like spider-man but guy oh i'm gonna go into that if i had to raise spider spider-man into the spider-verse out of a one out of ten I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen a Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine, but you can still subscribe to my channel. Look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of your screen and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning into my opinion slash review of spider-man into the spider-verse and before you go don't forget to always chase your dreams because i'm chasing mine my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace